Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Master Dwight Lewis here, and we're taking a walk through the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great day to be saved. Today is Thursday. It is the 11th of July, 2013. My goodness. I'm telling you, time is not wasting for anybody. So you better be prepared. See, today, here on Blog Talk Radio, on Take a Walk Through the World Radio, we have my brother, Brother Kevin Harrison. And today we have Real Talk with Brother Kevin Harrison. You want to say what's happening to everybody? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, I want you to know we're going over part three. This is about getting your house back and put in order. Part three is dealing with the storms that appear in our lives. And the title is, This Storm is to Help You Get Some Act Right. <laughs> Let you know up front, those stones will be thrown. We are casting lifelines only. <laughs> Step back, relax, open up your heart and your ears, and let God minister to your soul. Thank you. And, and you said that was called, uh, say, that to- say, that, say that again now. This storm is to help you get some act right. Well, as I always say, uh, we're going to tear it down any stronghold with the truth of God's word. So, but before we get into the show, I always love to go into prayer and invite our Lord to come and have his way. So if you guys are ready, let's go to prayer. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father. We thank you this day. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. For Lord, it is you, you are our heart's desire, and we long to worship you. Now, Father, as we go forth into this program again, we ask that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart to be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, my Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, for what you're doing, and what you have already done. Now, Father, I ask that you touch my brother's heart and that you allow him to bring forth a word that will bless the people this day. We ask these things in the name of our Lord, the anointed Christ, we pray. And we say, Amen and Well, I want to say something first before I bring my brother, uh, Kevin on, excuse me, yeah, Kevin on here. Uh, And what I want to do is I want to just come from the book of James, and I want to read you a scripture from the book of James. And it's over in the the first uh, chapter of the book of James, and I'm going to be reading from the... uh, from the uh, Amplified Version. I have my parallel Bible here. And he says, James says, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped or encounter trials of any sorts or fall into various temptations. Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith brings out an endurance and steadfastness and patience. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. And if any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to him. James is letting us know about that lifeline that Brother Kevin was speaking about. 
We're not throwing stones at you. We're not throwing rocks to, at glass houses. What we're doing is we're bringing the truth of God. And we're letting you know that when you go through storms, it's to help that house that you have built on the rock called Christ is solid. And we're trying to give you the lifeline and the ways to get into that truth and have a lot of um, success in doing so. With that, I'm going to turn you guys back over to my brother and allow him to go forth from here on his own. I 
archived version of this broadcast, uh, part one, was June 27, 2013. Part two, we dealt with self-reformation. And so while we're trapped in Satan's system, we choose to change ourselves without God's involvement. So making our situations worse, right? We must make the decision to surrender and get God involved early in whatever, wherever, and with whomever we are connected with. And so our decision to obey God's word and depart from our old ways proves that we have some understanding. You can check that one out in the archive version of the, uh, that was July the 4th. And that's when we had some serious fireworks on that, okay? 2013. Well, today we're going to deal with self righteousness. We are losing our houses because we repel and prevent people from God's blessings and promises. There's a battle taking place between the carnal man and the spirit man. You see, that needs to be handled. And so we got to deal with exposing the carnal Christian. Did you get that? I'm going to say that again. Exposing the carnal Christian. When you go to 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, it's going to give you certain behaviors of a carnal Christian. Listen, I'm just going to give you a synopsis, okay? They're being more image focused than God focused. How I look, right? Being more about service. Now, this is going to hurt some of you, but listen, being more about service for God than what God desires of them to love, mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with Him. Remember, this is not a stone, this is a lifeline. If it hits your head, uh uh, it's not going to knock you out. It's there for you to grab, to get out of the, the water that you're drowning in. This carnal Christian uses false humility to deceive their victims. And once trapped, they use scriptures to condemn you and keep you from God's blessings for your life. Note, note this. In order to get your house back and put in order, the carnal Christian within us must die. I want to make clear that carnality is not a word about physicality. Listen but a term that defines spiritual direction. See, carnality is about going in the opposite direction of God's will. Remember, there were two ways. There was a wide way that led, that led to hell or the lake of fire. And there was a narrow way that led unto life with him. Okay? So carnality is about leading in the way that goes away from what God wants for you. Again, remember, I'm not throwing stone, but casting out lifelines for my brothers and sisters. Carnal Christians are self-righteous, period. There is help, though, okay? It comes in the form of a storm. Did you get that? And so the storm is not to destroy your spirit, but to destroy the carnal man within you. See, the storm is to help you get some help, right? Let's go over some definitions real quick. When we speak about reconcile, to bring into agreement or harmony, make compatible, consistent. Order, the disposition of things following one another or one after another, as in space or time, succession or sequence, right? Self-righteousness. Confident of one's own righteousness, especially when smugly moralistic and intolerant of the opinions and behavior of others. Self-justification, see, that goes hand in hand. Self-justification, the act or fact of justifying oneself, especially of offering excessive reasons, explanations, excuses, etc. for an act or, or the like, right? Always given an excuse. Hypocrite, a person who feigns some desirable or publicly uh, approved attitude, especially one whose private life.
life, opinions, or statements belie his or her public statement. In other words, you know they live in a life, right? But last one, check this out: the storm. What, what really is the definition of a storm? A disturbance of the normal condition of the atmosphere, your environment, right? Manifesting itself by winds of unusual force or direction. They go that word again, direction. Often accompanied by rain, snow, hail, thunder, and lightning, or flying sand or dust, right? It's important for us to be on the same page as far as that's concerned. But number one, we must do things decent and in order. What is the order of getting your house back? First and foremost, there must be some love. See, if you're not loving your spouse or loving your family, loving the people that you're in a relationship with, there is no need in you trying to reconcile. Guess what? Jesus commanded us to love. So if you are not found with love, you are already condemned. Remember, this is not a stone. This is a lifeline trying to help you to get out of condemnation. We are able to get out of condemnation because of Jesus Christ. Right? He showed us what true love is. And so the first thing that we must have in order to get our houses back is we must have love. We must just simply obey the command of the Lord. Now, also, we have to have forgiveness to follow that. We have to have repentance that follows that. Okay? Now, the result of having forgiveness and repentance, or repentance and forgiveness, right? It depends on what side uh, you are on. Some of us need to ask for forgiveness. Some of us need to forgive. Okay? It depends who you are in the equation of this or in the relationship. Right? Now, reconciliation is the result of the first... Now, again, forgiveness and repentance, they are hand in hand. But you got to have that love first. Now, as I said before, we're dealing with, we're dealing with storms. Let me throw this to you. It's very, very, very important. Y'all remember Joshua? Men. I'm talking to the men. Listen to what Joshua said. He said, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me, listen to this, this is powerful. Men, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Ladies, this is not to put you out. But when men take their rightful position, ladies, wouldn't it feel so beautiful to hear your husband say such a thing? Isn't it that time that you just say, thank you, Jesus? Right? Now, ladies, if you're single, understand that you are saying this very same thing. Amen? If you're single, you're saying the same thing. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's so important. Because, see, guess what? When we are out of position, that's when the storm comes. See, everybody likes to talk about how, well, the storm won't last always. I know, I hear you. I know we don't all want to go through the storm. I know we like hearing the songs that praise the moment of coming out of the storm. But let me explain something to you. If it wasn't for the storm, would you really have listened to the word of God. Would you really have repented for that thing that you got away with? Would you? If you could get away with it, would you? But because that storm came and you couldn't get away, what did you do? You listened. And what did you do? You repented. And then there's reconciliation. My God, thank you for pulling me through and loving me enough for me to go through these storms that will give me a reason to repent for my wrong. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you can really thank the Lord for the storms of your life, as well as thankful for the times that you were walking on the water? I think of during the storm, after the storm, before the storm, amen? We're dealing with storms. Because you're not the only one. God has dealt with so many of us about storms. And I take you back to 
about getting some act right. Let's, let's, let's go to Genesis 6. And watch this. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh, guess what? Let me, let me, let me build this thing up here. When you have violence and wickedness just running rampant, and they won't listen to the word of God, they won't listen to God's way, and they do whatever they want to do, the storm comes. And when the storm comes, God says, I know how to deliver my people. And so, Noah, I want you to build an ark. When God said, I'm going to send you Jesus. And everyone to be in Jesus, I'm going to save you from the wrath that I have for these people to continue to ignore me and reject me. So he's telling Noah, I'm getting ready to allow a storm to come. And I'm going to deal with all of this. What did he say? He said, uh, verse 17, And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Except who? Noah and his family. Guess what? When a man gets in Jesus, his whole house, stuck. You, you got it. Man, we got to get in position. Ladies, continue to pray for us. Thank you so much for your prayer. We're praying for you too. Because we understand that storms come in everybody's lives. Regardless of gender. But guess what? The storm isn't just for these uh, wicked people and violent people in Noah's day. Guess what? The powerhouse Egypt had to go through a storm to get some that right. Let me get you some bad right. Watch this, Exodus 9, 18. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, this is Moses speaking to Pharaoh. Actually, this is God speaking to him, amen? He says what? I will cause very heavy hail to rain down, such as has not been in Egypt since its founding until now. Ooh. Hey, watch this. When, when, when that storm comes, watch how people get some act right. Listen to this. Verse, uh, 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 same chapter, verse nine, uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 27. Watch this. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. Did you get it? He's repentant because of the what? Storm. How many of us right now are going through a storm, and right now you're wondering, well, what is happening? I'm praying, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm going to get to it. Guess what? You're in a storm. What do? What should you do in a storm? You should be quiet and hear the voice of God through the storm. I used to be afraid of storms, and my grandmother and my, my mother tried to, to, to calm me down about being afraid of the storms. They would just simply say to me, God is at work, son. And do you know, it took me to get caught in a storm by myself one time to realize I had to remind myself that God is at work, Kevin. It's all right. And so from now on, even as an adult right now, when a storm comes for some odd reason, I become calm. It makes me want to go to sleep. I sit back and chill. Guess what? Your storm isn't to take you out. Your storm is to cause the carnal man within you to die. Cause you to repent. Right? Then watch this. He said, the Lord is righteous. This is Pharaoh. He said, the Lord is righteous. And my people and I are wicked. Guess what? It doesn't stop there. It don't stop there. Elijah. Now, Elijah is a prophet of God. Why would he need a storm in his life? Why? You can see, sometimes we get caught in that self, what? Righteousness. I'm the only one. That's what he felt like. So when he found out that Jezebel was going to kill him, he go run into a cave. This is how God deals with us through the storms in our lives. He asked us the question, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why are you calling your pity party right now? There ain't nothing going right for me. Huh? What are you doing here? When you ought to be out there fulfilling the mission that I have already mandated in your
13, that's when you get a chance to hear it. Take a look at uh, verse 11. It speaks about God telling them, look, go stand on the mountain before the Lord. And he was about to pass by and said that there was a great wind. The Lord wasn't in it. See, he allows the storms to come. He allows it because he knows that his children need to get some act right. It doesn't stop them. Remember Job? Job was a man of great integrity. But he still had to go through a storm. He had to get some what? Act right. He had to get some act right. And so in Job 38 verses 1, what does it say? It said, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said. He answered him again out of the whirlwind. Job 46. That's verse 6 for y'all. Isn't that something? Because see, Job went to the point of, well, you know, I don't know why he's doing this to me. And then I always remember this. My, my, my grandmother's uh, uh, favorite verse. Oh, he slain me, yet will I trust in him. Well, Job got beside himself when the uh, friends kept getting on him about why is he the way that he is. You said God is against you, this, that, and the other. And so Job started talking about why he, he, shouldn't be going through this. God is wrong to do this because I haven't done anything wrong. You see that? It went on, it was about his image. He became a little self-righteous and started justifying himself. And so the young man, he of you, had to get involved. Let me put this out there. Uh, some of you who are listening in online, you might uh, uh, you will be seconds. switching off. And I'd like to say a quick prayer with you before we lose you. Please understand that you can pick up the uh, the whole broadcast on the uh, recorded version. Amen. Or you can catch us on YouTube as well. Amen. I'd like to pray with you. Father God, bless those who are listening on the other line. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless them and allow them to come back and hear the other parts that is going to go on our stream in Jesus' name. Nothing else. I don't say it too much as it is, Lord. I'm sorry. It's 
isn't that something? He got some act right. Guess who else needed to get some act right? Y'all remember Jonah? Went through a storm. He went through a storm. Watch this. Uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea. So that the ship was about to be what? Broken. Now here Jonah is, he's down in the, in the bottom part, and everybody's crying out to their God, right? And they, look, somebody that messed up, one of us that messed up, and then they start casting lots to see which one of them was the cause of this great storm that just came from out of nowhere. And the lot fell on Jonah, right? And so they asked him, hold on, wait a minute. What is it that, what have you done, right? You got to take a look at uh, verse 7, because sometimes people need to really have uh, a pinpoint uh, place to go to, to find out what am I saying. Verse 7. And they said to one another, come let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and it fell on Jonah, as I said. Verse 8. Then they said to him, please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us. Now, now Jonah is like, you know what? It's my fault. It's all my fault. My God is God. I, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men got really afraid and said to him, well, why have you done this? And they, they corrected him. You ever notice that sometimes when you get so far out of line with God that the world uh, or the people that are in the world will correct you? People who who's not even going to church, they sit up there giving you the word. <laughs> they, they giving you some real wisdom. Huh? Isn't that something? And so after all of this, Jonah was just like, you know what? Look, uh, let's throw me over, overboard. Guess what? These men start praying to the Lord. Isn't that something? And after they 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 sitting up here praying to the Lord, look, don't hold us uh, guilty for throwing this man over. <laughs> Think about it. People become real religious when uh, storms come. All of a sudden, everybody gets some act right when a storm comes. See, everybody can talk big and bad about God, and, and you know, if there really was a God, if uh, uh, this, that, and the other, but let a real storm come, and I guarantee you the very same ones that question whether or not God really exists begin to say, the Lord. You see that? So storms are necessary for people to get some what? Act right. Gotta get some act right. Watch this. I, I haven't finished yet. There's some more people that you gotta realize went through some storms. You're not the only one. This is a lifeline. I want you to understand before uh, Minister Dwight and myself go into the structure that's necessary, we must deal with the individual who's fighting within themselves about this carnal a uh, man within them, okay? Because again, the carnal man must die. If your spirit man is constantly at war with your carnal man, your spirit man is so preoccupied in that war, he doesn't get an opportunity to fulfill the mission. And the mission is more, it is more than you. Amen? This mission isn't about you. This mission is about God's plan. And you are part of it. But if you're fighting within yourself so much that you can't do God's plan, you're missing it. This kind of man is supposed to have been dealt with, right? That's what the cross and all of that was for. I'm going to deal with that sin off of Watch this. You're not the only one. Mark 4, 37 to 41. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling, right? Guess what? Jesus was just like Jonah, down in the cargo, and he sleep. But guess what? Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Sometimes you can be so much about the service or ministry that you forget about Jesus. You forget. And what happens is when the storm comes, you come to Jesus, but you're panicking, and you're not doing what he has taught you to do. And so you wonder why if I had Jesus, why is my house still in shambles? Why is my house falling apart? It's because you're sitting up here not operating.
operating in the face. Watch this. Understand this. Uh, again, this is not a stone. I gave my testimony in the in the very first, in part one. The Lord brought my home back together. And he put it in order. Amen. It was when I shut my mouth like Job learned to. Storms teach you how to shut up when God's presence is needed and not your mouth. When I shut up, God's presence got on the scene. And he dealt with all hearts that needed to be dealt with, including mine, because mine was the issue. But the others had to be dealt with because I was going to be a different person. And so when you're a different person going back to a same thing, it's a same mess. And so what happens is, is when God cleans you up, he cleans up the environment that you have to go back to. Amen? So watch this. So now they're going to wake up Jesus, and he says what to the storm? Peace be still. But he gets upset with them, verse 40, he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? That's it. And so these storms come to prove to you and me whether or not we're really walking in faith. As Minister Dwight spoke about in James, these trials, it's about faith having this due. It's about endurance. It's about patience. It's about the work. Amen? Guess who the last one is? Because I'm looking at my time. Guess who the last one is? I want you, when you get a chance, if you're not at home or where you can actually look at yourself in the mirror, you, you are the one. You got to remember, you can go into the Bible and learn all about these other people, but guess what? Your children and other people are looking at you because you and me, we are an open Bible for others. They are looking at our lives. They are looking at how we deal with the storms of our lives. And if you go run around panicking and everything, then understand Jesus will rebuke you just like he rebuked those uh, disciples on that boat. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? And so in order to deal with this carnal man, but then we got to deal with love, right? That's the first thing. And who is love? God is love. And so the individual self has to be dealt with. Not your wife, not your husband, and not your children. You. You got to be dealt with. Your relationship with God has to be dealt with first. It's a must. And the way that you deal with that is what? I have to. I must. Do. Fulfill. What God gives me to fulfill. Now I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to mess you up. I'm telling you I'm going to mess you up because this lifeline is necessary to be cast out into the deep sea where you and me have been drowning. And this lifeline, again, is who? Jesus. Watch this. Verse 23. This is uh, Matthew 5, verse 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and then remember that your brother has something against you, verse 24, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Guess what? A lot of you, a lot of us, many of us have not yet done that. And so because we haven't done that, our gift to God is still at the altar. Will you do what it takes for your gift to be received, then get right. Get you some act right and forgive. Get you some act right and ask for forgiveness. Because until then, your gift that you keep talking about you and gave unto the Lord is still at the altar. With that being said, I'm going to stop right there. So on us next week, we're going to deal with the structure, with the family. Christian family, based on what God said, I pray that this has been a blessing for you. With that being said, I turn it back over to Minister Dwight. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, I see I have uh, Sister Laura on the line. I really want to say what's happening to her. I'm going to bring her mic live. Hello, Sister. How you doing today? Sister Laura? 
Are you there? Okay, she evidently. Are you able to say anything? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to tell you once again, you hit it out the park, my brother. We had a fantastic show today, everybody. We thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, Kevin, once again, oh my goodness. I'm telling you, God is just like really mending these shows and he's, he's, he's weaving them all together with everything that's going down from the Monday uh, marriage show all the way through the rest of the week. So this is fantastic. I can't wait until I talk on the kingdom tomorrow. So with that, uh, you want to take us out in prayer, my brother? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Let's look to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. I'm praying for the many families that have been touched. I'm praying for those who are going through their storms, Lord. I'm praying that you will cause a calm to come over them, that they will be able to hear your voice during the storm, Lord. That while they are in the storm, that they will remember that if I keep my eyes on Jesus, I can walk on the water, the troubled waters, while the storm is still yet going, and praise His glorious name. Father God, I pray for people's faith to increase. I pray, Lord God, that they understand in order for it to increase, it is through this storm that they're going through right now. I'm praying for release, Lord God, from the, the demons that come to haunt us and hurt us. And cause division in our own soul. I'm praying for mercy. I'm praying that love will have its way. I'm praying that they will ask for the forgiveness who needs to. I'm praying that they will forgive those who have come and ask for forgiveness. I'm praying that reconciliation shall have its due. That your name shall be glorified, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. With that being said, Lord God, 